Hi, it's Mohammed here, and today I want to share with you five ways you could be killing the sale. So, we all know sales are the heart of our business. Without sales, there's no money. Without money, we don't have a business and we don't have a lifestyle. So let me show you what are the five ways you could be killing a sale. The first one is being too pushy. Number one, being too pushy. Right, so what do I mean by that? Simple, you don't like it when someone comes to you, especially a salesperson, and they're trying and they're forcing you to, to buy their product. That's literally being too pushy. You wanna create an open, honest conversation, create a two-way street, engage with the customer, interact with the customer. That way the customer feels more comfortable and you know, obviously you're not gonna kill the sale. You also want to ensure that you don't have a hidden agenda because your customer will be able to pick that up straight away. So essentially, create a warm, inviting environment and don't be too pushy. Right, the second thing that you're doing that could kill a sale is number two, discussing costs at the get-go, right? So right at the very front, you're already telling the customer what the price is and what they get without again creating a two-way street engaging with the customer. You first have to articulate the value. You have to first solve their problems before you start getting into what the price is and how much it's going to cost them. Again, that is off-putting. People don't want to, uh, you know, they, they, they're not interested in, in something if they don't know that it's gonna actually add value and then you can talk about the cost later. Once you add value and you solve their problems, then price is not gonna be an issue any longer. You'll be able to charge a premium in most cases if you do it correctly. And if you do it wrong, you're gonna kill the sale. The third way that you could be killing a sale is trying to pitch to the wrong person. Pitch wrong. You could have the greatest sales pitch you can create engagement, interaction with the other person, but if they're not the decision maker, if they're not the one that writes the check, then it's pointless. You have to be speaking to the person that makes the decision, that makes the purchasing decision. So, kills a sale, you're talking to the wrong person. And yes, they might be happy and they might um, uh, engage with you and interact with you. But if they're not gonna make the decision, they're not going to uh, pay, that, pay, pay for that product or service, then you, you, you haven't got a sale. It's important that you speak to the right person. Gatekeepers, so sometimes you've got to call up and you speak to a receptionist and you might create a great uh, uh, rapport with that reception but that doesn't mean that you've got, uh, got the sale. You need to look for uh, and, and ensure that you're speaking to exactly the right person that you need to speak to. So killing a sale, straightforward there. The fourth way that you are killing a sale is being unavailable. Okay, what do I mean by being unavailable? If a customer tries to call you and you don't answer your phone, or your customer emails you and you don't re uh, respond to their email, that's literally being unavailable. It's like saying to them, I'm not interested, I don't want your sale. You're not, as a, you're not an important customer to me. If that happens, you're obviously gonna kill the sale. Customers are not going to, they're gonna go somewhere else where they can get service when they want it. Um, you know, and, and in most cases, customers, that's what they're looking for. They, they want to be able to uh, speak to uh, the salesperson, get in, get in contact with them at their first try and first attempt, and for you to be able to resolve their problems and questions when they, when they need it, not when you need it. So always make yourself available, right? Yes, of course, you can't always be available because you might be in another sales meeting or you might not be, uh, uh, you, you know, you might, it might be outside of business hours at certain times. But put in place a plan or a strategy to be able to get back in touch and back in contact with that customer in the quickest time possible. Okay, and finally, 
The fifth way that you could be killing a sale, and this one is probably one that most salespeople um, uh, uh, suffer from and you know why they don't close as many sales as they would like. And that is to, number five, fail to follow up. The biggest secret in sales is the follow up. We all know that it takes sometimes five to sometimes 12 different touch points, interactions with the customers to finally get that sale. If you're gonna try once or twice and then give up, well, that customer then is essentially gonna buy from someone else and you're gonna lose the sale. They might not be ready at that particular moment. They might need to take, need to take some time to make a decision or they might need some more information. You need to deliver some more value before they're comfortable um, purchasing from you so you need to follow up sales and follow-up is synonymous they go together you can't have one without the other you get lucky if you make a sale on your first attempt but where you're gonna kill the sale if you are not following up with your customer following up with your customer also shows persistence and it shows you know if you can I, I show value not being too pushy not discussing you know the costs uh, right at the get-go making sure that you're pitching to the right person everything goes into follow-ups so those are the five ways that you could be killing a sale don't do any of these